welcome back friends. This video has been 12 years in the making. This is the first day that uh, uh, Jack and I will be cutting wood together. He's never ran a chainsaw uh, before and I told him that uh, when he turned 12 in the fall uh, that I would teach him to run a saw and if you did a good job I'll buy you your own saw. So this is uh, going to be a, maybe a couple two or three part video series. We'll go over uh, fundamentals, uh, how to operate a saw carefully, how to teach your kids to do it. Uh, maybe some things to consider in purchasing saws and even the equipment you might want to take out with you in the field. We've got a pretty big job. We've got uh, two big dug firs down here on the ground that we're going to buck to length. We're going to be showing the how we process this fire, this not only firewood but wood for lumber. Uh, we'll take portions of it out that we'll use for saw milling. We'll take other portions out that we'll use for firewood and then the limbs and such that we'll stack those in a way that will make a, a nice habitat for the critters around here. So we'll show you how to do the whole process, the bucking, the skidding, the cutting, all of these things. I think you'll enjoy it. And so let's get started first with uh, maybe some considerations for safety equipment. So we'll start off with the five essential pieces of personal safety equipment that you're going to want before you do any type of uh, work with the chainsaw. Jack, what are they? Um, Number you're going to want... Start from the top and work down. Helmet. Helmet. Now helmet's important. You don't often see guys cutting firewood uh, it, with a helmet, but if you're doing any type of work in a, under a canopy or forest, it's really important because these limbs come down and they, they get loose and the vibration of a power saw, they'll come down. I've seen actual limbs come down in a fire two years ago, a wildland fire, that the guy had spent his own money and bought a Kevlar helmet instead of just the plastic issued ones. And it was a, it's the best helmet money could buy and a, and a limb came down and punctured that and penetrated through about an inch. We all saw that helmet and wondered what would have happened had he been wearing one of these. So a helmet's really important. Not only that, but it can really save your face and head in the event of a kickback. If you're not running your saw properly and it comes back, you can see that a chainsaw can come back. And if you have a helmet on, that can give you just that extra little bit of protection that you need. What's you're next? making me worry the fact that I don't have a metal one. Uh, the plastic one is fine for that. You're not going to have any kickback problems today. After the helmet, what's next? Uh, then eye protection. Eye protection. Now what I recommend are these Bugs goggles. Uh, we all wear these in the Forest Service, uh, in the Fire Service, because they're a wire mesh. A lot of loggers wear them as well and they won't fog up. Running a chainsaw and cutting is really, a, it, it's a very exhausting, it's a very physical job and you'll sweat. And regular eye protection will fog up and it just gets dirty, becomes a problem. So the Bugs wire goggles are the superior uh, for cutting. What else, what's after that? Ear Number protection. Three. Ear protection. If you're going to wear a hard hat, you're going to have to go with squishy plugs or custom-made plugs. Muffs are just not going to work unless you have a helmet they're incorporated into with a face shield. Those are fine. A lot of guys like them. I don't personally like them. I find them too bulky and limiting. Uh, but if you want to use that, that's fine. What's next? Um, chaps or... Chainsaw chaps and a good pair of gloves. One last thing before we start the saws and something I'd probably recommend, always have an axe at hand. Uh, Jack's got a, a small axe, something that's going to have a re reasonably short handle, something that you can operate with one or two hands but is going to be used for lots of things. For cutting small limbs it's easier sometimes to have an axe than a chainsaw. It's going to be used for pounding wedges, you want to make sure something that's got a nice flat pole on the back of it and a safe way to carry it. Jack's also, I've got him equipped here with a small wedge. Get in, the custom, get in the habit of having wedges on you, one uh, or two. If you're falling, certainly two or, or more. I, I carry these bigger ones in my pocket or just put them in your back pocket. I've got the little one there for Jack. They're just handy if you get yourself in a pinch or in a bind or you need to, to just a thousand different things, or get your bar unstuck, you can use those wedges and, and you should just always have that in your back pocket. My Fowler's Bell, I'm going to have a couple other things. We've covered this stuff before, but a good sturdy leather belt, an axe sheath, a way that you can carry your axe on your back and access it without undoing a bunch of straps and things. Of course, the very best ones made are the Grizzly Peak, uh, made in Idaho. Grizzly Peak Enterprises, they'll make these for you, whatever size axe you want. A logger's tape, if you're going to be doing dimensional lumber or doing any saw milling, chainsaw milling, or using your wood miser or Lucas mill, you want that on you so you can get an idea of what lengths to cut, and then your chainsaw tool. Especially if you're cutting in brush or really wooly stuff, sometimes it'll throw your chainsaw, you want to have that, you don't want to stop what you're doing and have to run up to the house and grab one. So and just, this has a really funny name. 
scrunch. Yeah, it's called a scrunch because it's a wrench and a screwdriver. Cut out, drill a hole in it, put it on a piece of P-cord, put it on a clip on your belt so that you can get to it real quickly. And then I really highly recommend some sort of a personal first aid kit with a tourniquet, a combat tourniquet, an IFAC type of thing, you know, something very similar to what the troops are using. If you have a chainsaw wound, if you're working in the woods by yourself, this right there, that little investment is the difference between life or death. It doesn't take up much space and I'd really highly recommend it. You should have that on your person uh, within reach uh, and on your belt even better. All right, so let's get Jack, uh, let's go over the fundamentals of working with the chainsaw. I'll show you some of the hazards. We'll get it fired up and you make your first cut. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so, so I think we're ready to go. So Jack and I spent a couple hours this morning going over safety and everything and how the saw works, all the nomenclature. And I think he understands it, but basically it comes, what it comes down to is just get a saw, uh, if you're teaching little ones or you're teaching your kids, something that's got the shortest bar on it that you can and it's reasonably lightweight. We'll be using just a small 260. This is a pro saw. It's a wonderful saw. If you were just going to have one and you weren't doing serious wood cutting, uh, this is the one I'd be re recommend. It's going to be twice as much money as some of the consumer saws, but it's going to be a saw that'll last you a lifetime if you take care of it. I've got about a 16 inch bar on there for Jack and you ready to get started? All right, let's start it up. Now starting, if you're starting, if, if you're a beginner, I'd recommend you do follow the manual and that will be put a foot in it. Put a foot in it, grasp it tightly, and then pull the cord and start it with the brake on. Now, of course, if you're more of a more of an advanced user, that's just not practical. You know, nobody's gonna be doing that. So the Forest Service has a way of starting it between your legs when you're standing. You can start it that way, that's approved. It must be safe. I'm sure they've spent millions of dollars researching that. You're going to see guys are going to drop start them too. So, you know, it all depends on, I'm not going to tell you what to do. It all depends on your skill level. But for beginners, I'm going to insist, Jack, that you start it the proper way. Make sure your brake is on. Grasp it firmly. And pop it. So what I'm going to be teaching Jack today, first off we're going to do some basic bucking. We've got uh, a log down here, it's got a swelled end on it. We're going to cut a 16 inch section or so off of there and just to get a feel for that. A feel of working the saw, a feel of controlling the power and the throttle into doing it safely. So what I'll do Jack is I'll demonstrate here how to do it. Watch my hand position. It's okay. really important that your hand is always two hands on the saw at all times. Never one saw, because if you have one hand and that were to, something were to come back, there's nothing to arrest it from coming back on you. So make sure that you have two hands on the saw at all times. The on only top, time you'd have one off is that you need to smack the brake. Off. Right. So if the brake is if the brake is on and you're cutting and the saw comes back, look what happens. It engages the brake. It's designed to do that. So not a hand down here, not a hand over here. Those are all advanced falling techniques. Those are not for you right now. But for you, your hand needs to always be here with the thumb wrapped around there on the top bar and one of the trigger. Now when we come in to make our buck here, Jack, we've got to ascertain on the tree is uh, what's going on with it, the delay. Is it being suspended on both ends? If that's the, if that's the, the, uh, the case, then we have a whole bunch of pressure or tension or compression in the top here. And if it's going like this, if it's suspended on both sides, when you start cutting, that's going to close, it's going to pinch your bar. Now if it's suspended in the middle, if it's sitting on a stump and the, both the edge, edges don't have very much weight in it, then we're going to have a lot of compression on the bottom. So before I cut, if I don't have a sheath, I'm going to take my axe out and I'm going to put it somewhere on the log where I can get to it if I need it. Don't put it on the piece that's going to, you're going to cut because it'll roll away. But I'll put it up here, and it's there, out of my way if I need it. Always know where your tip is at all times. By not paying attention to your tip and putting it in the ground and hitting a rock, it causes you to stop and lose 20 minutes to refile your saw. So it's better to stop, put your brake on. If you're unsure, look over and see. We don't want to get that tip of that saw down in the dirt. 
All right, so we had some technical difficulty. We had a messed up bar. That 15 inch bar is no good, it wouldn't cut. So we swapped it over for a 25 and a brand new chain. So this is a little bit big, but I'll, I think you're big enough to handle it. So are you ready to cut? Mm -hmm. So this, I want you to cut just to the left of the curve here. That was good. It was really good. So you felt using your senses and you watch. You watch that gap start to open up a little bit. You got off the trigger and you were, you were really good about when you broke through on those fibers that you caught the bar before it went down into the dirt. Maybe a little bit, wind that, hit that throttle, just zing, 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 just a little bit. You'll feel, you'll feel the saw go through and it should just bounce and you should be able to hold it up out of the dirt. But that was very, very good. Only thing that I could say is you get, you're cutting a little bit crooked. It's really hard to, to, to judge that when you're sitting on the side of a slope because you're, you're cutting at an angle, and, but that'll come with time. But those are really good. Those are good fire rounds and you have really good throttle control. You're able to move the saw. You're starting to feel it. You're starting to be able to use your body to counteract its pull and, and the pressure and it looked really good.